and his first shot on TV as a newly minted ultimate pool professional. And if he's going to break like that, he'll be pretty pleased. Although, no ball goes down, it ends up dry. Caught them pretty sweetly. Cue ball absolutely perfect. And yeah, no friends. So it's Jack Whelan who has the first visit of the day here. It's the first day, well, we've got to day three of the competition where the opening shot of the day hasn't been a golden break. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's very true, actually, yeah. Um, Steve Jones is side web with you on the comms for this one on this Thursday morning. And this, this is a big test for Jack Whelan because, as we mentioned in the studio before, Simon, that this has been a real graveyard, this competition for top seeds. There's barely any still standing. We've still got plenty to come in today. Got Jack Whelan and Sean Chipperfield in this group, who are 6th and 11th in the rankings, respectively. Chris Melling to come a little bit later on. So th there's still some big hitters to come, but there's not many still standing who've already played. Yeah, and it's, I think that's going to be the case in the, in the pool world. It's so volatile, these races to serve in 14 minutes. Uh, you know, it, in pool terms, it certainly notoriously, it will feel short to these players, although it's, it's very fast becoming the, the norm. And actually, this is a, a good race and a good test for them. Um, I'm really fascinated to see how Jack Whelan plays. He has been a little bit under the weather, like so many people across the country have actually, and uh, I think he's a little bit further ahead in recovery from Jordan Shepard last night. But he comes in to me, for me as the a warm favourite for this match, as does Sean Chipperfield in the next match. But you know, as you said, the favourites aren't exactly uh, going well so far this week. Yeah, and Jack left a temper there. He didn't fancy being the aggressor in this frame, played safe first up. But it did leave a carrot, and Lewis has decided, like Rudolph around Christmas time, to take a nibble. One problem then for him to solve now, he's made that lovely pot into the middle pocket. And he played it, he made it with pace as well, which was excellent. And he needs the readies next to you to go past the other one to the top right corner. Doesn't have a good angle on other balls. And the one problem he has is obviously just above the right center pocket. He was looking for an angle to be able to break it out of one of these two at the top. Yeah, as Jake mentioned in the studio segment, Lewis, a former snooker professional, that a fair few number of years ago now, but he's uh, he's still got a lot of talent in the potting department. Yeah, one of my favourite stories in the board actually over the last couple of years, Lewis Robert, former professional snooker players moved into the cue making world now makes snooker cues for some of the top snooker players in the world and some of the top pool players so fantastic in that regard but started turning up to these events because he you knows some of the players but his wife was also working at the events as a as a referee and he thought well why not why not get involved and start playing as well and and that's sort of grown into sort of a passion for enjoying the game and he pushed himself and challenged himself and earned his way to this through the Challenger series and it's it's really fantastic story and he's a such a lovely guy off the table it's really lovely to see it and again Jack just leaving a tempter Jack's a little bit dead in the water on yellows what he has done there cleverly is he's developed his yellow so if he comes to the table again he's in prime position to take them on but he had to leave a bit of a tempting one yeah that was tough though and now the yellows look great, although that little final nudge will frustrate Jack because I don't think he would have had any other thoughts of developing that yellow on the right. I think that was always a double for him. Now that red's got in the way of the double, he'll probably have to be, play the breakout shot. Although Jack Whelan, I say he would have played on the double, Jack Whelan is one of those players that, that may play the breakout rather than the double. He, he's not as big a fan of the double as a, some players can be. Maybe enough room just to drop behind it as well and then just drop it into the middle. It's, it's a tight one. <coughs> yeah, I think he's just going to track behind the one into the right centre, drop it in. Won't look to try and do too much off that yellow, although it won't be great position if he just drops it in. The more he tries to do, the harder that pot becomes. Uh, 
<coughs> Can't avoid the red here, but may just spin off it to get it a roll or two below it. Clip back into the middle. Jack is of a really select number. We talk about the ability of our ultimate pool professionals a lot. There are so many brilliant players. But Jack is one of those that is considered one of the best of the best, really at that elite, elite level. And even at that level, Jack will tell you himself, you never fully settle into a match until you've got that first frame on the board. And he's ended up a little bit tricky here. Doesn't usually like his doubles. But he's going to have to like this one, and he's recovered brilliantly. Yeah, excellent shot. Excellent recovery. And you're absolutely right with what you say. He's one of those players that, in his mind, it's trying to get up to the number one rather than just sort of being amongst it all. Yeah, Jack doesn't play to play in tournaments. He plays to win tournaments. He always feels that if he gets the chances, he is capable of winning tournaments. Look at that right down the middle of the table. I mean, no friends on this occasion, but that was a perfect break. Yeah, all you can do is hit it right, and Jack Whelan did that. And Lewis Roberts, meanwhile, will feel that a little bit of justice has been done because he also hit a lovely one in the opening frame of the match and didn't make a ball. Frustration for the wonder, but back comes the cue maker for first poke in this frame, and this is a nice layout. Yeah, this all be just what he wanted an opportunity to get his cue arm going the chance he had in the opening frame or the couple of chances he had were awkward it was never a good chance to win the frame this one it absolutely is oh, he might be a bit short on that one though he's got options i think he wanted to be on the one to the bottom right though and i think he's half a roll short i think he might just about be okay you know He is, yeah, he is. Look at that. This is perfect in which case. Yeah, plenty of angle to come up the table, and yeah. that's a nice nudge as well. Yeah, he'll take that. In which case, my apologies, Lewis, you played a perfect shot. Just see there in the background, that's Trish Murphy. And she is Lewis's wife, and two kids are down as well over the Christmas period in their festive dresses. Yeah, look at that. There they are. First time they've been down to to be with mum and dad for one of these competitions. They were both very, very excited, I can tell you, over the Christmas period. I think we should have won uh, something like that in the studio, Stephen. <laughs> very dashing. You couldn't pull that off. <laughs> so Lewis just needs to make sure on his final already has the angle just to be able to hit the gap. The eight ball looks simple, but you just got to make sure that you don't allow anything to get in the way. Mm, maybe not the best angle on the one to the top right. Yeah, he's it's, it's just sort of second guessing himself here. Oh, it was actually okay. Just pinched the pocket a fraction just to make sure. I thought the natural was taking him sort of towards the red, but it wasn't. It was okay. And now he has the perfect angle. Just float through the gap. Just like that. And there it is, Lewis Roberts on the board at one each. More chances than Jack, because you feel like Jack is going to be fairly clinical. And that will come from the break. Try again, is it? Yeah. Oh, that <laughs> was a teaser for him. Didn't quite get the last ball rolling. He was tracking that yellow all the way, and it did not quite have the, the legs. Look at eyes fixed on it. Everyone watching. 
Right, if Jack can get through for an opening yellow, then this is a lovely chance for him as well. He can obviously play the one over the bottom right. A ball isn't in the way, even if it was, he could go cushion first. So it's not a problem at all. Oh, that's not, oh, he's okay. I thought for a second he was going to slide underneath that red, which would have been a really poor shot, but he's absolutely fine. I think he was playing the cannon on the red. He didn't necessarily need to, but just the way he shaped up for it, it looked like he was playing the cannon. Might have to just bend it round the red here. But he wants to get rid of the one over the pocket first. You can see how tight this is. Clever. Oh, clever, really clever. Yeah, I was worried for a second though when he was sort of looking like he, all he could do was kind of drop it in. He wouldn't have been nicely on the next ball. He could have welded up behind that yellow. So clever to play the outside one first just to drop the inside one in, knowing he wasn't doing any damage to the outside one. And now he just plots his, plots his route from here. It shows you where Jack Whelan's mentality is at in terms of not in a, an arrogant way, but just in a self-belief kind of he knows where he's at in terms of the level of his game. That you know, He came in to Ultimate Pool this time last year. The Pro Cup last year was his first event as an Ultimate Pool professional. He felt winning Pro Series 3, so essentially his fourth event as an Ultimate Pool professional, winning that one was sort of monkey off his back kind of because he knows that he came into Alma Paul expecting to win titles and it was okay, let's get the first one out of the way and build from there. And he's had a great year. He's he made the semi final of his first event, which was this event last year. Played very well, was beaten by the eventual winner Jordan Shepherd. Got the uh, got the revenge though in Pro Series three where he got his first Pro Series win over Jordan Shepherd in the final. And as he punches home another eight ball. He's in good nick as well because he's in the final of our last event of the season, the Champion of Champions <laughs> shootout. No. It's it's the season every single player on the tour would take. And there it is, there's his break. It's just I mean, just stick that on repeat for a tournament, because that's what he does. Yeah, when Jack wins tournaments, and he has won a lot. When he wins, a big feature of it is how good his break is. Just keeps giving himself opportunities. And, you know, we're not just talking about a guy who just breaks well. His play out the table is so exceptional that he feels that if he gives himself opportunities, he'll win matches. Well, one bad ball on the table here. And he's looking at it straight away. And having said he's not the biggest fan of doubles, he made one in the opening clearance. And he's lining one up right now. This goes in, they'll all be there. Has he just slid too far down the table? Really wants to be on the one in the left centre. I think he, he is. He has a backup plan up the table, and he can can get out from there. It's it's not what he wanted. Yeah, reroute required then for the one depth. Shouldn't detract too much from his chances of winning this frame. Just got to play one good shot onto his red down the table. Doesn't necessarily have to even worry about that. He could leave it a distance, and he's got pretty good access to the eight ball from there. the perfect angle to drift down for this one so even though he wasn't on it earlier on when he wanted to be it was never going to become a problem for him and back to back yeah two lovely visits to the table in a row from Jack Whelan 3-1 he leads in the early going here 
Oh, he can't hit him better than that, Lewis. He's hit two good breaks, but that's the one he really wants to hit. That's a that's a great strike. You could almost sense the difference in in the explosion. Ball's flying in straight away as well. That's just a perfect contact on the pack. Has to be red, you feel, unless that yellow does slide in top right and bottom left, but it doesn't look likely. But first shot on reds might be tricky here. You can get through to one over the bottom left, actually, when you review it. It's the one above it, does that pass the yellow? I think so. So actually, reds here are just wide open. Red on the brake line goes top left. Access to the plant. The others are all there. This is, yeah, this is just absolutely what Lewis would have wanted after sat in his chair for two straight frames. When he plays this plant, the other red shouldn't go anywhere other than stay over the pocket. You can actually play f these three in a kind of variety of different ways. Yeah, I've got loads of options here. It's a lovely layout. Even with a layout like that, Lewis is still kind of working hard to try to pick routes to make life even easier for himself. And the reason I sort of mention that and highlight it is because he does come from a snooker background. He's, you know, the, the, the sort of patterns of Paul aren't as natural to him as, as they are to others. And he is always kind of looking to try and improve on that side of things. And it's noticeable for me that he was working very hard to leave that one left centre to connect to that one that then gets him to the eight ball. And he could have literally potted those last five in any which way he wanted. They were laid out so beautifully. So Jack back on the break, 3-2 in front. We've reached just short of the halfway stage. This opening match of the day, crunch. Lewis will get first poke. There's, uh, there's challenges in this frame, though. A couple of clusters that need working out. But if you are going to dry break, and Jack Whelan never, ever wants to dry break, but if you are going to do it, you want to at least leave a little bit of a challenge at the table. And bottom of the table is wide open. <coughs> top of the table needs some figuring out. Yeah, this is a messy one. A whole top left-hand corner is not nice. And if he takes yellows, then yellow on the right-hand side at the top also becomes a problem ball. Red's top left are awkward, but so are yellows. It's a tricky one to kind of work out. The red-yellow are a plant, but I'm not sure if that helps you a huge amount. I think that's an effort to try and develop the yellow on the right-hand side and hasn't managed to do so. I think Lewis says his colour set, it's now going to be a tactical exchange. First one for a few frames. I think we've just seen four straight clearances from the break. This one is going to come down to a little bit of tactical. In the last tactical exchange, it was Jack Whelan that won it. He won it largely through patience. Yeah. More than doing anything clever out there. Waited, bided his time, and then went. I've got a feeling Lewis has to be careful because I mentioned the red, yellow or a, a, a plant there. If he allows Jack sight at the table from below it, Jack will take the opportunity, I think, to get that off the table. 
knowing that the other yellow at the top of the table is still a problem ball. If he can take that off the table and keep the cue ball safe, it, next time he comes to the table, he'll have an opportunity to actually clear up because he'll only have one bad ball and two ways to deal with it. And actually, he, he, would, he was tempted to go there. He might have played the loss of turn on the one at the top if he had knocked this one in. Yeah, I wonder if... There's not really a word for it or a phrase for it, but I'm going to... With Chris and one here, like a delayed safety. He's potting one to set up a safety. Yeah, he's shot. He's yeah. He can't play the lost turn from where he is, so he wants to pot one, and then he could have potted red top right, screwed across the table, and tried to make it happen. But more likely, play the red yellow that's right on the top cushion, play that, and weld the cue ball up behind the, the red and yellow that are together. And if that was his plan, we're about to find out because Lewis has left him the perfect position to do exactly that. What he's looking at yeah so that might be one that Lewis is you kind of got to work out what your opponent's trying to do and how they're going to try and earn chances and then how what, what are you going to do and it's not easy at 30 seconds a shot I know but he I think Jack jumped out of the chair where when he saw where he'd been left he was thrilled to be left that shot <coughs> I think Jack would have preferred to get the cue ball one more roll across and not leave Lewis sight of anything else on the table. Oh, that's disappointing for Lewis. He was trying to make an absolute mess of the red at the bottom of the table and just say, OK, you've got a problem at the top, you've got a problem at the bottom as well. He hasn't managed to do that, actually. He's opened it up a little bit more. <coughs> so, pot the one top left, and you can see it's always nice when the players do the commentary work for us. <laughs> Play the cannon, and he was pointing at the red, not the yellow. Mm, he got the yellow, not the red. Does it go? I don't think so. Might have half a pocket, quarter of a pocket. Very, very tight. Yeah, I think it will drop in. If you can get right behind it, it's a chance. I do, but you want to be absolutely behind it. It's as tight as it can be. Well, if he's looking at it now, he's not perfect. You, want to, you just want to be able to drop. He's <coughs> dying in. He's played he, with not a lot of pace. He can drop it in and be on the next ball right centre. The problem is, he, if he's in on the right centre from high, he then has a slight problem on position on the next shot. So he may be looking at the red over the bottom right-hand corner following this. Yeah, didn't try and do anything with that cue ball. The more pace you play it with, the smaller that pocket becomes. Yeah, it was already pretty small. He might be able to play this red off the yellow. He can obviously pot it directly, but if he pots it off the yellow, it might help him with his controller cue ball. Yeah, use the yellow. That allowed him to play it much straighter and get perfect position. That was a, a lovely shot. It really was. Not easy to... I mean, the pot was simple. But to get the perfect cue ball from that distance, from raising the butt of the cue, that really was a very well executed shot. And this is a... It may not come down as a break clearance on the statistics, but this is a perfectly played frame of pull from Jack yeah. Whelan here. Uh, executed the tactical exchange. Lewis fell into the trap. Waited for an opportunity, got it, took it. It's just a perfect frame from Jack Whelan and 4-2 in front now. Another dry break for Lewis Roberts. His fourth of the match, break-wise, and three of them have been dry and you are always going to struggle to win matches if that is your stat line on the break. No matter how 
good you are, no matter how well you're playing, you are always going to struggle to win matches with those kind of numbers. And the issue for Lewis is he's not just playing anyone, he's playing Jack Whelan, who he's playing very well. I said at the start of the match, you feel that Lewis probably just needs the line shot. Oh, well. Did not expect that miss from Jack Willen. He was looking, starting to look very dangerous, but big error. So this is a good moment now for Lewis. Yeah, great chance. This has to go if you're Lewis Roberts, because this will hurt. Jack Willen doesn't make many mistakes, and when he does, you've got to be primed to punish him. Still wide open table as well. Tough pot made that look very easy. That's the side of the game that comes easy to Lewis Roberts. The tactical side, maybe not so much, but that sort of that queuing shot, he's got that in the locker. He'd have loved to have run what a ball further on or less. I don't think yeah. he would, if he was straight on the plant, I don't even think he'd have minded it too much. I mean, he wouldn't have been his first choice. Don't get me wrong, he's not, not looking to be on the plant, but. He, it couldn't. Be, I mean, if anywhere in the middle of the table, but where he's finished, he, he can pop this. But the cue ball's going into the eight ball. What damage is he going to do to the eight ball here? And in trying not to do damage, if he floats that in, knocks the eight ball to the left hand side, he can stay on a red to the right centre. But then the eight ball goes dead. So he has to play it firmer to not let the eight ball go dead, and that compromises position on the next ball. Well, uh, this. This is your test of queuing. This this is what he has put all those hours in over the over the course of his Q Sports career. This is tough. It's tough as it gets, really. Not to beat. This is starting to feel like a very key frame in this match. Can Lewis <coughs> win it? <coughs> get it back within one and make this a very tight match as we go into 15 seconds a shot where it always gets a bit dicey out there or does Jack stretch three in front now that both players have had chances as well carries even more weight yeah lovely shot really lovely shot that okay now attention because now he's got access to both of his difficult balls down the rail he has, but he may actually choose to use that one over the right centre to go up and develop the one at the top of the table. I'm not sure if it has a pocket, so he could clip it thin now and go off the top cushion and into it. And he's choosing against it, get rid of this one first. He's got a play. Just. The way he's going about this, I'm assuming the yellow at the top of the table does go top right hand corner. Looks very, very tight on the camera and doesn't that just show the development of these top players Jack being one of them to the conditions out there that he was completely caught <laughs> yeah <laughs> o almost cold there with the with the shot clock realized he didn't have his extension and still able to get back in prime position and knock in not a not an easy part. I mean, what a positional shot he's played there. If, if I think that answers your question as to whether it goes top right. Yeah, absolutely does. <laughs> yeah, he, he, the beeps come in far, and the, the clocks, the, the screens go five seconds at the end, and that caught him, and, and he was able to jump in position and play it. And that comes from experience of knowing actually how long you can be on the shot for. So even though it was having to jump in position, it was still he made it look comfortable. Yeah, when, when this first was sort of put in by Ultimate Pool, the, the shot clock being this extreme, the beeps and all the rest of it, you know, it, it, it felt very, very foreign to a lot of players, but it's amazing how quickly these these top players have got used to it. I mean, we, we know now from, from speaking to various members of the Ultimate Pool Pros fraternity that some of them use the beeps as a guide. They, yeah. they can actually concentrate, listen to the number, use them. Absolutely. And the other thing that we've seen with the evolution of Ultimate Ball is, is how necessary it was. Every now and then I'll pop in and watch some, something that isn't. Just, you know, 
it's it's needed. You're not referring to myself and the photographer's game last night, are you? <laughs> I, I may well I may well be. <laughs> well, that's why it impresses me so much because there's no way I can play on 15 <laughs> seconds. Jack really though. He is about two. He's 15 seconds away himself from entering the witching hour of the 15 second shot clock zone. And he leads comfortably by five frames to two. Three frame cushion heading into this portion of the match. It's just about as much as you could hope for. I'm going to take some responsibility for Jack Williams' break not quite delivering today because I said it's the <laughs> for me it's the best in the world and he's been uh, dry more than he's been successful, which is very very rare. Yeah, but well you can sort of see why. You, you know, yes, I totally understand what you're saying, but you know, it's um, as we heard from Jake McCartney in the studio yesterday. You you have to judge breaks by sort of, you can't judge them on performance, as it were. And it's just going to, well, attempt to play safe here, but I don't think that's particularly safe at all. I think those yellows are very, very nice now, if Jack can pop the opening one. But you can't judge a break on performance, because it's too inconsistent. You can't <laughs> trust the uh, a ball going in. Sometimes it is potluck as Jack Whelan very nearly got caught out again there with the shot clock. Rice smile and a shake of the head, but he's fine. Yeah, that was more because we transitioned into 15 seconds of shot. That first shot of 15 seconds catches you out more than actually the 15 seconds itself. But yeah, I agree. It's more about the with the break. It's you know you you can only judge it on on actually how well are you hitting it rather than the, the outcome. If you you're hitting them great, then you might need subtle changes to try and find a sort of a way, you know, a ball going in, but all you can do is hit them well. And that's where there is some luck in it, but hit them well and hope it rolls your way. Well, Jack won't mind the start of the frame being like this, because this is chewing clock. That's a great shot from Lewis. Yeah, and as much as it will be irritating Lewis, because that match clock is running away from him, he has to win this frame. He can't win the match if he loses the frame. Four frames from where he's going to be is going to be too tough. So you have to win this tactical exchange and then take out the finish. There you hear the uh, family fortunes buzzer, but he was just about in time. He was touching ball there, Jack, so he could play away. Is Lewis going to take on the big money plan? I think he is. I think this is the moment for him. He's got a nice angle just to get the cue ball out. Shots. Yeah, now go. This is an opportunity. He's earned it. We've had three three tactical exchanges in this match, and two of them Jack Whelan has won. The third one, Lewis has. Now he has to put the finishing touches to that. Yeah, and that was very well played by Lewis as well. Though those shots that he's playing there, the really, really touchy feely, you know, barely touching the cue ball but keeping it in total control, they are so much harder than they look. Difficult not to foul, let alone play a play a good shot. And when those boys are, are playing on a postage stamp, really at the top corner like that. Yeah, it was subtle, but also impressive. And that's nice. Yeah, this is lovely. Great opportunity now. Yeah, he may have wanted to get a little bit closer, but we like said he's such a good cueist. It's having a nice little angle just to let the cue ball do its thing, rather than having to do too much manipulation of that cue ball this time he could have done with an extra few rolls he would have much rather been absolutely straight on this one may have to play this with some check side to kill the cue ball oh, it goes the other way he plays twice across but Great plays shot. it perfectly oh, that's very very good perfect frame from Lewis Roberts this time Lovely stuff from Lewis. Keeps himself in touch. Can he get his break to fire though? Oh, I can't believe that yellow hasn't dropped, but he does get a ball at the top of the table. And now that yellow hasn't dropped to the bottom left. I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter because the, there was another yellow down there anyway. But this is a lovely layout on the, on yellows. 
Yeah, it's a great chance. It's a, a very good chance. He could, in about a minute and 30 seconds time, this could be 5-4 and Jack Whelan all of a sudden is looking over his shoulder under pressure on his break, which is slightly misfiring. Purposely tried to make both balls there. When does he go up for the only tricky ball on the table? Left centre. I guess it depends what he decides to connect it to. I can see the, the argument for leaving it connecting to the eight ball, but the problem you have then is if you don't get a good angle on it, you might leave yourself a tricky eight ball, so possibly sooner. Okay, he's going to leave a yellow down the table. So I come through the gap. I'd love to get past the straight on this yellow, so he wants to get quite a long way to the left-hand side. He's played that really well. That is very, very nice. Maybe one more half a roll would have been perfect, but he still would have taken this. Yeah, one more half a roll, it meant he would have gone an extra six inches to the right, but you'd, you'd take this all day long. How good is this from Lewis Roberts? Back against the wall, come up with these two frames. This has been some match. It has been some match. 5-4, 4-18 left on the match clock. Uh, miss hits it this time. Doesn't get his normal, and that's why this slight raise of the hand, because he comes across to the right-hand side with a cue ball rather than straight up the table, but balls fly in. This is a strange game, because he's hit some of the dry breaks perfectly. Yep. That's that's how it can go. Oh, he's behind the yellow. Oh, what a bad shot that is. Jack Wheeler can't believe what he's done there. Not sure Chris Day can, <laughs> as he watches on. I mean, Jack's got most of the bottom half of the table to land in there and be on something to the top right. Well, Lewis Roberts, now is the time to tie the match. It's not easy. He's got to play a really, really good shot. That yellow at the top left is really tricky to solve. You can play short position on it. Yeah, the eight ball's slightly problematic as well although the double probably wouldn't be the worst option for that eight ball is there enough room to pot this one and slide across the the table he'd have to get very close to the reds and the yellow the gap is actually very very small here I know he's decided against it and well, I misses the misses the pot but mm. I don't think he's left anything. Yeah, I don't think he's left anything at all. I think he, uh, that was in his mind. I'm not entirely sure. I don't think that was in his mind at all. <laughs> well, no, I, no, what I mean is I, I don't, I, I'm not entirely sure what his plan was for the, the yellow at the top of the table. I'm not saying he was trying to miss, but absolutely wasn't. But yeah, it's... Uh, I think it's one of those where 15 seconds a shot. Lewis is one of those, I think, with a slightly more classical cue action. He prefers to have a little bit more time to to feather up and make sure he's right. Lovely double. Yeah, that's gone awkward and it's still that yellow at the top of the table. Lewis has talked to us a lot before about this 15 second shot clock. His issue as he's described it to us is, is seeing it. If you can see the shot, sort of as Tom Ford said to you the, the other week, if you can see the shot, fine. 15 seconds isn't a problem. But if you're still dilly-dallying and you've got three seconds to play the shot rather than ten, all of a sudden, it's tricky. Just have to force that across. Now, and has he got an angle to land on that final yellow? No. I'm not sure how he's getting there. Well, there's your answer. He isn't. Has he, got, has he got a sight of it? Can he try and maybe play some kind of back double? I, was, I mean, he never tried to get short position on it. He was trying to get to the top right-hand corner, so maybe he was thinking double if he could have landed above it into the middle. But from here... What an effort. Oh, it was close. It's in the corner. Oh, it's just pulled off. So his, his plan was always the double in the middle. 
He was just trying to get right onto the top cushion. It's not a bad effort that at all. He'd have had a shot at the eight ball. Jack's not got an easy shot here. He's played that well. Now he can pot out. It doesn't matter. He won't. It makes no difference to him whether he wins his frame or not. He just has to pot three more balls. And he knows that, and there'll be a huge amount of relief inside right now for Jack Whelan. There really will be. At 5-2, he was playing brilliantly, and it looked like it was all going to go his way. And as it so often does, 15 seconds a shot has changed everything. And you have to credit Lewis Roberts with those back-to-back -back frames he won to tighten things up. Yeah, it's job done now then for Jack Whelan. Final shot of the match. And the Wonder is going to win through by five frames to four. Brilliant match that. Both players really played their part. Jack Whelan played some super stuff in the early going. And Lewis Roberts threatened to pull off a really, really epic comeback. But it's Jack Whelan who holds firm and gets through.